हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई वेलकम यू इन लेक्चर नंबर वन ऑन एस्टिमेशन फ्रॉम दिस लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट एस्टिमेशन थियरी व्हिच इज ए पार्ट ऑफ स्टेटिस्टिकल इन्फ्रेंस वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अर्लियर दैट द मेथड्स ऑफ स्टेटिस्टिकल इन्फ्रेंस आर डिवाइडेड इनटू टू मेजर एरियाज वन इज एस्टिमेशन एंड द सेकेंड इज टेस्ट ऑफ hypothesis or hypothesis testing so this is the lecture series for estimation theory and after completing the area of estimation we will move towards the testing of hypothesis as we know that the purpose of statistical inference is to generalize from information contained in random samples about the population from which the samples are obtained that is suppose we want to study some characteristic of a population then as we know that it is not uh, comfortable or sometimes it is impossible to study each and every object of the population so uh, to uh, study the characteristic of population uh, we are drawing a random sample from that population and using sample statistic uh, we can draw the information about population suppose we are interested in the estimation of mean of a population or population mean so for that we can select a random sample and uh, we can find out the sample mean of that random uh, random sample and we can use that ran, uh, sample mean to estimate population mean so this is known as this process is known as statistical inference so if we wish to estimate the mean mu of a population for which a census is impractical for example the average height of all 18 year old men in this state suppose we are interested in the average height of all 18 year old men in some state then uh, it is not uh, advisable to uh, find out the height of each and every old man in this state and uh, uh, to find out the average instead of that the reasonable strategy is to take a sample of some persons uh, which are 18 year old and uh, find out the sample mean for that sample and then using that sample mean estimate the unknown parameter mu by the known parameter x bar that is sample statistic so for example if we take a random sample of 100 18 year old men and if we find out that uh, sample mean or average height of that 8 uh, 8 uh, 100 uh, selected men is 70.6 inches then we would say that the average height of all 18 year old men in this state is 70.6 inches so here we are using sample mean as an estimate of population mean so this estimate is known as point estimate we are using the numerical value of sample mean as the estimation of population mean so we will call this uh, value of x bar as point estimate or we can say that x bar is the point estimate of population mean estimating a population parameter by a single number like this for example in this uh, we are estimating uh, this uh, population mean of uh, height of all 18 year old men by this number we find out the average of 100 uh, 18 year old men and we find that that average height of eight uh, average height of 100 randomly selected men 
of 18 year is 70.6 inches so we are using this value of sample mean to estimate the population mean so estimating a population parameter by a single number we are using a single number 70.6 inches to estimate the population parameter so this process is known as point estimation point estimation means we are using a single number or single value of statistic to estimate the population parameter in most practical situations the sample mean is an acceptable statistic for estimating a population mean we know that another measures of central tendency are median and mode but in most practical situations we will use mean of a sample or sample mean as a point estimate for population mean now when we are using the sample mean to estimate the population mean for example uh, suppose we are drawing a sample of some size say n and we find out the sample mean for that sample then uh, we we can consider this sample mean as a estimate of population mean so now it is not necessary that this x bar will be nearly equal to population mean uh, we can have another sample of same size and for that sample mean may be far from this population mean also so there will be some error or we can say that the difference between sample mean and population mean so this difference is called the error of estimate we are using sample mean as a point estimate of population mean so we are interested that how closely this sample mean estimates this population mean so that word how closely it is not easy here to determine that how closely this uh, sample statistic is to the population parameter so we are interested in the error that what will be the uh, difference between this uh, sample mean and population mean so we are interested in the error of this estimate x bar minus mu or we are interested in the statement that how closely this x bar will be near to population mean so how to find out that error of estimate so if you recall uh, we have discussed that for large samples that is if sample size is greater than or equal to 30 then if we consider this uh, random variable x bar minus mean of a population divided by standard deviation of a population which is divided by square root of n so we know that for large samples this x bar minus mu divided by sigma over under root n is a standard normal random variable okay, this we have discussed in earlier lectures so using this uh, we can find out the modulus of x bar minus mu or we can find out the bounds for this error this is the error of estimate or this is the difference between the sample mean and population mean so for that uh, we recall that this variable is a standard normal random variable therefore its uh, distribution uh, we'll have a bell shaped curve for example let me sketch this roughly suppose this is the standard normal distribution for this variable now because this is a standard normal random variable its uh, mean will be zero and uh, uh, we are interested that 
uh, what will be the bounds of this error so for that suppose uh, for this random variable suppose i consider that this area area in the right tail and area in the left tail suppose i consider that this area in these two tails or uh, by the symmetry of the normal curve we can say that this area these two areas are equal suppose total area in both the tails is alpha then this area will be equal to alpha by 2 so area covered in both the tails either in left tail or right tail is alpha by 2 so total area covered in the tails is alpha so the area which is in between these two points suppose this values of z we denote by z suffix alpha by 2 and this is to the negative side so this is going to be minus z suffix alpha by 2 and we know that area to the right side of z suffix alpha by 2 is alpha by 2 or in other words we can say that probability that standard normal random variable exceeds this value of z is equal to this area which is alpha by 2 now area covered in both the tails is alpha so we can say that area in between these two points minus z alpha by 2 to z alpha by 2 is 1 minus alpha so if our uh, standard normal random variable is in between these two numbers then uh, we can say that the area is 1 minus alpha or we can say that the probability that our standard normal random variable takes values in this interval is 1 minus alpha probability that minus z alpha by 2 less than or equal to z less than or equal to z alpha by 2 this is nothing but area between these two quantities this area i can scratch with different color area between minus z alpha by 2 to z alpha by 2 under the standard normal curve is 1 minus alpha now Uh, from this we can say that the chances that z lies between these two numbers or probability that z lies in between these two numbers is 1 minus alpha or we can say that uh, with probability 1 minus alpha this inequality is satisfied the probability that this inequality is satisfied is 1 minus alpha so we can say that this is satisfied uh, with probability 1 minus alpha now we have the formula for this capital z so that i substitute here capital z is x bar minus mu divided by sigma over square root of n this is less than or equal to z alpha by 2 or this i can rewrite as absolute value of x bar minus mu divided by sigma over square root of n is less than or equal to z alpha by 2 and we know that sigma and sample size are always non negative so we can say that absolute value of sigma over under root n is sigma over under root n so we can rewrite this as absolute value of x bar minus mu divided by sigma over under root n is less than or equal to z alpha by 
so from this i obtain this i am interested in this error error between sample mean and population mean is less than or equal to z alpha by 2 times population standard deviation divided by square root of n so here we can see that the maximum value of this error is z alpha by 2 times sigma over under root n or we can say that this difference can be at most this quantity and this quantity we will denote by capital E and it is known as maximum value of error so we will call this capital E as maximum error of estimate which is sample mean so capital E is given by z alpha by 2 times population standard deviation divided by square root of sample size and it is known as maximum error of estimate some authors call it as margin of error also margin of error is z alpha by 2 times sigma over under root n where sigma is population standard deviation n is the size of sample alpha is such that the probability that this capital z lies between z minus z alpha by 2 and z alpha by 2 is 1 minus alpha or in other words we can say that we are 1 minus alpha into 100 percent we are 1 minus alpha into 100 percent sure that this inequality is satisfied so this 1 minus alpha is called confidence level or level of confidence okay this is another word for probability instead of using probability uh, we can say that we are 1 minus alpha into 100 percent sure that this probability is equal to 1 minus alpha so this confidence level or level of confidence is always 1 minus alpha and uh, that is considered generally as either 95 percent or 99 percent so that 1 minus alpha will be equal to either 0 0.95 or 0 0.99 but you will be given the level of confidence in the problem related to this type of maximum errors of estimate so if confidence level is not given you can use 95 percent confidence level if it is given then you have to use that particular given confidence level so here we have discussed that how to find out the maximum error of estimate so when we are using a sample mean to estimate population mean the maximum error of estimate is z alpha by 2 times sigma over under root n provided we are considering large samples that is n greater than or equal to 30 so this we can consider as a large sample estimation of a population mean we are estimating a population mean with sample mean and we assume that the sample size is large so this uh, discussion we can consider it as large sample estimation of a population mean and for large sample estimation of a population mean we will remember that maximum error is at most z alpha by 2 times sigma over under root n and that we will denote by capital E so this is the formula for maximum error of estimate with probability 1 minus alpha and we call this probability 1 minus alpha as confidence level or level of confidence so I have written all these things here systematically large sample estimation of a population mean and here we have known value of standard deviation for population so as I discussed for large samples 
z equal to x bar minus mu divided by sigma over under root n is a random variable having approximately the standard normal distribution. So this is the uh, graph of standard normal distribution. Here the probability that z lies between these two values minus z alpha by 2 to z alpha by 2 is 1 minus alpha. So I have written all that discussion here. So I am not repeating here. So finally we will remember that capital E equal to z alpha by 2 times sigma over under root n is the maximum error of estimate with probability 1 minus alpha for large samples. So this we will remember. Okay, so I have discussed all these things. The most widely used values for 1 minus alpha are 0.95 and 0.99. And uh, we will discuss that how to find out corresponding values of z alpha by 2. So value of z alpha by 2 corresponding to 0.95 is 1.96 and uh, corresponding to 0.99 is 2.575. So this we will discuss in the examples that how we can find out the these two values. Now if population standard deviation is unknown and if we have a large sample then to find out maximum error of estimate we can replace population standard deviation by sample standard deviation s so in this formula we are just using sample standard deviation instead of population standard deviation so if sample size is large and population standard deviation is unknown we can replace sigma by sample standard deviation. So this is the formula for maximum error of estimate with probability 1 minus alpha if sigma is unknown and we are having large samples. So this is all about this lecture. I have discussed how to obtain the maximum error of estimate in this lecture. So I hope you like it. Thank you very much.